So hi everyone and welcome to Architecture in the Den and today um, I'm delighted to welcome Ming Cheng. So I met Ming on Clubhouse which is I think a lockdown um, social media phenomenon <laughs> <laughs> and we're still, um, in fact, this is the first time I've actually seen you virtually because most of the time we speak on a Monday morning between eight and nine o'clock in our room, constructive together. And um, we have many conversations, but this is the first time I've actually seen you uh, on video. So um, nice to me. And one day we'll actually uh, meet in real life. So um, I think I just forgot to introduce myself. Uh, so I'm Lisa, <laughs> Lisa Rains, uh, founder of Pride Road Architects, the architectural practice franchise. And I'm going to introduce Ming. So uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to your podcast. And uh, yes, um, uh, it's kind of strange times that we actually kind of um, how, how we meet each other. And uh, and uh, I enjoy very much um, our kind of um, morning chat, uh, you know, during on a Monday. And uh, but I think it's one thing for sure. You definitely don't want to see me at eight o'clock in the morning, you know, on a Monday, especially after... <laughs> Especially after my swim, you know that uh, is definitely not 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 for uh, cons you know human you're, consumption. I say you're doing very well. Kind of you appear halfway through the conversations because you go for your swim on a Monday morning, which is very impressive. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'm, yeah. You kind of surpassed me because I'm. It's now sort of quarter past four on a Monday, and I've been kind of on the hot seat since eight a.m. And I've not left my chair, and I really do need to get out and go and go for a walk or get some exercise. So, well done to you. Same here. Anyway, just to uh, a brief introduction. So, uh, my name is Ming Cheng. Uh, I'm an architect. Uh, I'm also a charter town planner. Also, a uh, urban design, urban designer. Uh, been practicing in the UK for about 20 years um, in a private sector. Uh, I um, also, uh, as well as actually teaching in private practice, uh, also, I also actually teach, I actually teach at university, I also teach at uh, UCL um, and London School of Architecture and also University of Suffolk. I have my own startup practice called Place Profile, uh, actually mainly actually looking at cities and and um, you know, do anything about uh, cities and, and, and buildings. Uh, but as well, you know, as well as that, I also, you know, will, will do architecture, you know, as well. And uh, so anything from, from, from house extension, you know, all the way to designing cities, you know, I, I probably kind of do, do a bit of both. Do a bit of both the the macro to the micro. Indeed, indeed. I like that. Um, so 20 years, so uh, where did you study? How, tell me about your journey. Oh, right. OK. Yeah. Where do I begin? Um, uh, well, originally uh, born in Hong Kong uh, to a to a probably what I'll call, uh, I suppose you can call it kind of like a middle class uh, civil servant parents um, under the colonial rule uh, in Hong Kong you know, before the handover. So both both my parents actually uh, works for, for the government. Um, my my dad is uh, is kind of like a university lecturer, and my mom is actually works as a, uh, in a, in the hospital as a nurse. But uh, but in that process, uh, because of the colonial rule, there's one of the perks being as as civil servants that um, uh, they can send their children to to the UK to study. Uh, so I didn't know at the time, but I was actually quite privilege that actually being sent to boarding school you know in in, in this country so um uh so have a have a have a good education and then and then so, subsequent so how old were you went to when you went to boarding school uh, about 14 15 um okay. and which one if you don't mind uh, yeah it's a it's a school called st john's in in um in in, in surrey called in a small town called leatherhead near guildford mm, okay yeah, probably nobody will actually heard of it. It's, uh, it's a quite a small school. Um, you know, because I was talking to um, Roger Wu this morning from, he's over in Hong Kong, um, and I think he's originally from Hong Kong, but then he was telling me how he'd studied in Bath. And I was wondering if there was a, you know, a similar story there. So 
yeah so check out there'll be another podcast going live architecture in the den with roger Wu. so he's um he's an architect over there and he used to be on the riba council for asia asia so anyway. right. sorry <laughs> yeah yeah no no i'll look i'll look many, out for that yeah, many I'll look levels out. of uh, of yeah so you came over at 14 yep and and how long were you away before? Did you go back and forwards and holidays and stuff like that? Or yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, I probably normally go back during probably Christmas and obviously during the summer, um, and um, and then stay stay here, you know, in in, in between. Um, so that's quite a, quite an interesting journey. Um, as as I said before. Um, didn't realize how privileged I, I, I am really to actually going to a school like that um, mm -hmm. probably until later but uh yeah and then and then afterwards actually started went to university um I first studied Which first, I went to UCL uh at the Barclays to study planning yeah um and then and then I actually subsequently after study planning uh went to Westminster to study urban design mm -hmm. um and then actually got a job, actually start working, um, and then realize what I really want to do um, is much more kind of the urban design kind of space. But uh, I realized I didn't actually have enough knowledge about about buildings. And mm. this is actually what I'm really interested in, is actually not so much of at that time, not so much of actually designing building as such, but because of the training or, or because of the study in training in in planning and urban design at the time, he, he, they didn't actually really actually get into that kind of detail. And I was getting quite frustrated about not knowing enough you know, about it. So after a few years actually working, I decided that, look, I, I just don't know enough about what I'm doing. And um, I just see that as almost kind of like the shortcoming. So decided to retrain myself. And um, so went to, went to actually study part-time uh, while working Kind of four days working four days a week as a, as a day um, kind of one day a week uh studying at london met to retrain myself as an architect so where and um, when did you qualify i qualified ooh, probably about 2010 2011 you know when i get my part three um but it, it was just a long very very long little very very long process because i think studying part-time um it took about six years or seven years mm -hmm. the, the actual the actual studying not not the not the whole process you know so uh because obviously you only study one day a week so it's not quite like the five years that you can actually get through the whole degree i think it's something like six or seven you know altogether. i, I lost track you know I, I, i'm just so glad towards the end i, I finished my <laughs> I finished my part two. Is that right? Okay, so I don't have to actually do any more design project. While, That's while it, quite a journey. That really is quite. Although, I mean, you know, I've, I've someone asked me on social media this morning to kind of like, you know, what, what do you do, and you know, have you stayed in the in the career that you started, and you know, when did you retrain? And you know, I, I was like, Yes, I'm an architect, and I did seven years, um, and you know, started at 18 and went to UCL, and then year out, and then second degree, and then second year out, and part of it. And you think, you think at the time it takes so long, and then in hindsight, when you're actually in a career that you love doing, it's a gift. I don't know if you find that at all. It is. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, it is. I mean, it, I, I mean, I, I quite enjoy the process. Um, yeah. I, well, oh, I didn't. Well, I mean, I, I didn't actually enjoy it as much as I, I could have. Uh, let's put it this way. Mm -hmm. Just, but that just because um, uh, uh, it, it just a kind of you, you have you have work it you have actual work work and then you have yeah. actually you, you have the studying at the same time. So you, it, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. But but I think I I, I you know I, I get whatever I, I get the most out of under the circumstances you know I study mm -hmm. I managed to actually get my architectural qualification but then at the same time I, I don't have to study full time and and uh, I would have loved to be able to do that but I just couldn't. Um, so so there must be something unique about the service that you offer and the skills that you have where you've got the intersection between planning and architecture. Yeah, 
So what would what would be your your ideal uh, project scheme? Um, good question. Um, I think probably what will be a good good project will be a I don't know it, it could be let's say working on behalf of well not just I don't think I don't think how it's going to work but uh, it, it just kind of scenario that probably working for local authorities while on a regeneration schemes and being commissioned to first of all being the let's say the master planner and you're literally looking at you know this this substantial piece of land or whatever regeneration that you need to do and um you're being retained as a master planner mm -hmm. and then subsequently you can actually get involved with probably helping on the client side yeah. uh, actually to see through the master plan but yeah. then at the same time it could be also a role that um maybe to us actually get involved with designing one or two buildings i think that that will be quite a quite an interesting uh, project to do not not that not that i actually found a project like that you know at the moment because it's always tricky you know to do to do um regenerations and actually doing master plan because it, it just takes so long and there's so many different kind of steps you know along the way circumstances would change economic or political um kind of environment probably will change as a result and um but that that will be that will be the great project to do mm. and, 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 i mean yeah the that would take that's almost a lifetime's work isn't it going from the, the macro to the micro in in that scenario indeed yeah. i mean I've, I've just um i've just been training up to new franchisees and so the training involves taking them through my process so um you know we just we're the opposite we're not as as uh, kind of flexible as you we kind of ju i just offer a very simple service it's uh sort of architecture for domestic extensions and i've got an incredibly streamlined process that goes from um sort of client finding which i know you wanted to ask me about through to kind of getting clients on board taking them through to kind of procuring builders and pre-start meetings and you know the training is uh sort of 10 days over a month um so as well as getting manuals and guides and constant support there's kind of like 10 days of kind of hands-on face-to-face training and in that process i'm trying to kind of in in um sort of uh instill like the whole process and you know this is client a. and and kind of like showing them examples of uh each stage but you don't have one client going from start to finish in one go you know it's mm. not going to take a month you know so it's it's going to be you know this is you know this is a prospect meeting this pros so we might do a few prospect meetings but you know then they're not going to see the completion or the procurement yeah. of the services in that time yeah. so it's kind of like you know um one 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 cert one style of meeting to another style of meeting to another style of meeting to another style of meeting you know typical examples where you know we do sort of follow the same process i wonder if there's a way to do that with master planning hmm. <laughs> I, I don't think I don't I can relate and I don't think there's any any, any different you know to that as well but I, I think um it's a I long think process it is still a long process and yeah, um and I'm sure process. well I mean yeah. we, we, we both know even well I don't know how well you, you we can discuss that uh if we want to actually go into that but but sometimes you know just just like just like probably for domestic client some domestic client they just want to get through planning and then that's that's all they care about um, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't they're not interested into do into the detail design or, or whatever right mm -hmm. and then so you have one one sort or or but but and then if you if you if you stretch it along you know let's say let's say to that to to a big master plan it is because so many kind of agents and um and different people was actually involved yeah. political situation actually change and economic situation actually change and, and all that so um this is actually really really kind of 
kind of complicated the whole thing to be able to almost stay in the project and see through it that is mm -hmm. a very very long process and um yeah yeah you're quite right it's almost kind of like a lifetime's work you know to just just do if you are actually can can actually stay stay on that long yeah so. Mm -hmm. yeah so you were going to ask me something yeah i, I was what well, i mean I, I was i was gonna try I was just quite curious about, uh, well, I mean, first of all, you know, kudos to you that uh, you, you actually are a completely different, different business model, actually having a franchise model, which is, I think is great. That, that is actually very innovative. I mean, I, I kind of understand personally, you know, I understand you know, you, you, when you talk about franchise, you, you, you start thinking about is, well, I mean, first thing you actually come to me, I mean, don't take it personally. It's kind of like the, let's say the McDonald's, you know, th those are kind of franchise, you know, that, Absolutely. so, yeah. yeah, so I understand that kind of, that kind of way. So you basically, you, you help whoever franchisees, so you give all the standard, as you describe, you know, the standard training, the procedure, et cetera, et cetera. And you have your standard, you probably have all your, well, you know, everything is like being taken care of in and down to the drawing drawing issue sheets or, or title blocks you know that they don't need to worry about it, everything of that because you take care of that i'm just curious this is this so how does it because where, where is a where's a mcdonald's is slightly different right you know you open a location and then you have clients because you have a very physical thing you open and people come to you and mm -hmm. uh, and it's up to the franchisee to do a really good job and and mm -hmm. actually being consistent about you know the food or, or whatever mm -hmm. but how does it work in in the architectural world then so when after you give all the training you know yeah. it doesn't mean they do, do you just say right off you go go and find your own client and and come back to me if you have a problem or or, or how does it work well i suppose the mcdonald's analogy is is quite a useful one so you know um we know uh, a mcdonald's franchise they you know the the franchise would have researched you know a series of areas that um with a demographic that would support a McDonald's, um, you know, on a on a main route, route or or whatever, and and you know that if you put a store there, that you're going to get X amount of passing trade. We've done a similar exercise, so we've um, sort of working with franchise consultants, split the country into 155 territories, and each territory's got 70,000 owner occupier homes within a 20 minute travel distance so um you're talking um sort of relative well not uh not rural areas but it stacks up in quite a lot of areas across the uk i'm looking at my map um you know it doesn't stack up in central wales or um sort of a, quite a lot of scotland but it does around kind of glasgow edinburgh dundee um uh, you know, the, there's some places that are, are more remote and can't quite get to, so that wouldn't stack up, but, you know, it does stack up in 155 other places. Um, and so what we do, we know that we've got that many kind of householders looking to do work. Um, we, um, we do a lot of sort of promotion through HQ, so sort of my team do a lot of work on Google. So Google's your kind of your, your main kind of source of, of uh, client inquiries. And so, you know, it, um, it doesn't take long uh, to kind of start getting to the front page of, arch you know, architects, uh, um, North Cheshire or Warwickshire or, or whatever. So so the idea is, is, you know, that's one of our lead generators is a client coming on going architect, um, Warrington or, or whatever. And then if, and then we work with, with the franchisee to build up that kind of head of steam on Google, be it search engine optimization or Google AdWords or a social media campaign or content. So we work really hard with the franchisee to make sure that, you know, we start coming up on that first, first page of Google. Mm. So, and then what we do is just capture those clients. So you've got, you know, you've got 70,000 owner occupier homes, you know, looking for architects. <laughs> I can see you Googling now, aren't you? 
<laughs> no, 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 just something pop up. I just need to make it go away. You know, I, I, I'm not. I, believe me. I don't, I don't know what I, I would. Do, yeah, I, I will do that in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, that's what you're buying into. It's kind of that brand and that brand equity that we've spent a long time going into. So, you know, instead of just one person sort of going out on their own going, you know, I'm an architect, I'm working in Kensington or Mill Hill or whatever. Um, you know, I've got, you've got this big power behind you. Um, yeah, so a client would have a look around, land on the website and just get drawn into mm -hmm. to, um, the, the, you know, booking an appointment with the franchisee. So I know you asked who's the responsibility to find clients. Well, it's um, if you buy a franchise, it's uh, it's your own business. So if you were to set up, you know, under the Pride Road banner, you'd be to so Pride Road, Mill Hill or North London. I don't know. So like I say, we've got about so 15 territories, 15 to 20 territories in London. So, you know, it would be a specific kind of series of postcodes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'd put in sort of like a fair amount of money and effort, but also we'd expect you to, because it's your business at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you'll want to generate the most amount of leads and the most amount of inquiries. So, you know, we'll tell you, we'll be kind of prescriptive about what we want you to do, mm -hmm. and then you'll do it. So. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. Well, it sounds great. Thanks. Um, well, it sounds like um, there's a fair amount of support in terms of actually get, getting getting the head start, and then obviously it's up to the individual to um, put putting the put the work in. Uh, I mean, so um, Pride Road South Warwickshire, we kind of launched on Google literally two weeks ago, and we were doing a search last week and typed in Architect South Warwickshire, and we came up on the first page of Google, which is just kind of outstanding, really. Great, fantastic. Yeah. So I don't know whether if you do that today, that would still work. <laughs> or, or what, but you know, that's the, that is the power. Um, I mean, cause I, well, I, I set up, um, I set up my own business 10 years ago. So just after the, I set up Rain's Architecture 10 years ago, just after the um, uh, financial crash, because I couldn't find any work. And it was kind of like the launch of web 2.0, the launch of social media. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of just built my own website, used a, a WYSIWYG, you know, kind of um, what you see is what you get. Um, mm -hmm thing and really quickly built a really deep website and I was on the first page of Google for Manchester Architect for a while and the big guys in Manchester were like what <laughs> what's she doing <laughs> and it's just that that know-how and kind of like that collaterals just kind of moved across into into where we are now yeah well, no, good, well, good on you. And uh, and, and I, I just I'm just fascinated that um, you you kind of go into a slightly kind of different space in in terms of uh, rather than just being a very traditional architecture. You know, traditional architect just say I'm just doing architects, and and I'm just going. You know, you, you actually move into a, a a slightly different space and just say, you know what, uh, I'm actually very good at actually doing this and then i'm actually going to set up you know this mm. kind of business rather than just being I, I i'm i just want to do i just want to draw buildings you know that, that's yeah. quite a, i think quite a lot of architects they are kind of quite stuck on and to say i just want to design and i don't want to get involved you know i don't want to even want to think about finding clients you know or, or do whatever you know just just give me a drawing and then i'll do it and, and, well, that, and that, it. yeah that's it for that for our franchisees it lets them concentrate on doing the drawings in the building and the, you know which is which is brilliant and i mean it, okay, we're completely the opposite ends of the spectrum aren't we because we're i've gone right let's go i'm really niche and you've gone i'm macro and i'm micro i think that's 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'll agree, but uh, but but at the same time, I think because I, what I'm looking at is is so big, but and then I'm also being quite specific in it as well in oh, terms yeah. of um, in terms of what I what actually my kind of well, it's a startup, you know, that that I have at the moment only set up. Well, we we the conversation that that we have about this kind of service or or the thing that we're interested in, we've been talking about it for many many years. Is myself, uh, Steve Smith, which is a, actually a colleague of mine, and also another colleague, uh, it's called Laura Argentieri, um, is the three of us. But mainly, it's actually conversations. It was mainly it's actually the three of us actually talked about it. But it actually started with with um, actually the, the conversation actually started more than ten years ago. You know, when we during the financial crash. Crisis, <laughs> financial crash because i was working with steve and uh we almost sort of go well well we, we, we're a bit screwed aren't we you know being an architect so what are we going to do and um um i mean we, we're very interested in in cities and actually making mm. places and but at the same time um what what i what we're actually seeing is uh what we still we still is is you know architects we are very very good at describing things in in kind of imagery and mm. and and we and then we build a, a um you know beautiful words you know writing around it and to say this will be have the amazing quality because i'm the architects you know that uh, i know you know it's, it's a kind of a lot of, a lot of opinion based design whereas what we are what we're talking about is we're not very good at, and in some way that was actually reflected in in our industry as well. We're not very good at research. Mm. We we're not very good at measuring things, and that's what actually what I'm actually interested in. So, you know, my 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 speciality is all about how when when we say well we want to we want more public space, and then I, I sort of ask the question say well how much how much public space you know that that sort of thing. So you're looking in a slightly different angle. You know, so anyway, so that's that's kind of so in in a way, I'm what I'm trying to say is, even though we are, you you are actually looking in a very very kind of very small scale, but you are being quite niche, and I'm actually looking into a very very big scale, but at the same time, I'm I try to be quite niche in terms of what I'm offering, you know, as well. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, anyway, but uh, I'm I'm just sort of at least ten years behind you in terms of uh, in terms of the journey, but uh, yeah, but uh, look. Looking forward to uh, what what it will see see what will what will come out of it. Mm. Well, happy to support you in any way. <laughs> of course, thank you. Oh, I mean, um, so I'm just looking at the time. It's kind of we I suppose we better start wrapping up the conversation. Um, I wonder if we should just circle back to uh, Clubhouse and just um, just a re just it's a really interesting space uh aud audio space we should mm. probably say in um in terms of you know kind of networking because i know a lot of um sort of students and architects you know sort of do struggle um around networking um i mean um here's one for you so um are you how are you getting on with with kind of looking out for clients and referral partners on it um i have been active in clubhouse yes but uh, i think i think at the be you're, you're absolutely right at the beginning it is actually very very active in terms of people are actually logging on and actually being quite active about about this well, I think I just noticed, and I did actually manage to make, uh, well, actually make, make a, a few um, kind of potential leads. Not all of them are, are actually have anything. But I think what I learned in terms of networking is you don't necessarily actually just convert every single contact that you make is you, okay. you will actually find a job, you know, or, or you'll yeah. be able to work together yeah. is, is about, and, and it's about relationship, isn't it? That um, even even that conversation that we have now. I mean, who knows that um, it, it could be something down the line. I, I I'll need to ring you up and say, Lisa, I, I just I, I need your help or whatever, right? So you yes. you don't or, build or, or vice versa. If someone's listening in who wants to have a look at your website, maybe that's a good time to promote you. What, yeah. what, what do you want to? Yeah, sure. 
uh, well, my, my uh, uh, as I said, you know, I have a, I have a, um, uh, a startup. Uh, it's called Place Profile, and the website is www.placeprofile, uh, one word, dot co, dot co. So nice oh. and easy to, nice and easy to, to remember. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. maybe, maybe if you put it in your blog, we can pop it in the description. So if anyone wants sure. to check it out. Sure, of course. And uh, yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, look, please, please do. And uh and, uh, and, and uh, well, I think, I think what is actually quite interesting is actually doing, even doing podcasts, you know, like that, is um, when you actually look at a website or when you actually, and that's, a, what, that's the thing I find Clubhouse is actually really, really effective, uh, um, better than Twitter and better than, let's say, Instagram, is pre because it's audio-based. Mm. Because on, let's say on Instagram or even on, on, on Twitter, I find it quite often what you write in Twitter is very, very different. Pe people read, you know, read on text mm. how they, how they actually, what, what, their interpretation of what you write is yeah. very, very different to yeah. maybe completely different to what your original intention is when you actually write it on mm. Twitter. But whereas in audio is a very, very different thing because mm. um, it, first of all, it cuts out the video bit so you you don't you all apart from a profile picture mm -hmm. you don't have this slightly uh, visual bias that we all have yeah. whether we like it or not we, we kind of have that and because you have is voice only so you you can only you can only take on what that person what what he or she actually said and and that i, I think i find it fascinating and also it also cut through some of those you think that person that uh, oh you know this person I mean I, I don't know you know it could be oh Ming Ming is actually an architect uh, urban designer with all the experience and then he also teach you know he he must be I can't possibly talk to him or or oh I can't possibly talk to Lisa you know because she has this extremely successful business you know why would she actually want to talk to me you know, but is it is exactly the same thing that people have this kind of perception right yeah. but whereas when you actually listen to when you actually listen to in Clubhouse, you suddenly think, oh, you know, uh, um, no. Ming is just this guy who who go who, who is this mad person who go go swimming three times a week, you know, first thing in the morning, and and then he's often, you know, whatever. He he's actually not as scary as I think. Be. Um, maybe I should actually get connect with him and, yeah. and actually ask that question that I always actually want to ask. Absolutely. You, yeah, that, that's how, how how I take it. You know, so. <laughs> Yeah. However, since meeting you on Clubhouse, I've been sort of following you. Well, we connected on Facebook and I love your photos. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just um, what, it, what camera do you use? Uh, well, I'm, a, I'm a kind of quite, a, quite a keen photographer, so I, yeah. I wouldn't say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of amazing photograph. Um, yeah. I mean, that's one thing that um, I kind of use that to kind of use that as part of the during the pandemic that um, sometimes I could just either just cycle you know around and just take my camera with me and then just go and take photographs because you can do this you can do it social distantly you don't need to do yeah you don't need to actually talk to people yeah and it's quite a internal process as well yeah I have a um I have a full frame Sony camera and then just a, a, a lens, but and then I I I, do, I did actually take have, have a tripod, you know, with me. And oh, do amazing. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, 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 I, I I do actually sometimes actually just go out in the evening, you know, whatever, and just say right, okay, I really just want to take that shot that uh, you you have that conversation in mind, and then and then you go and take that photograph and and. Oh. and yeah so if anyone was listening and wanted to see these um are they to put them on your instagram yes it's actually on my instagram account so uh my my instagram and well on my instagram and my twitter uh handle is exactly the same is uh, architect ming or one word so please have a look at you know look, look at my instagram account and uh, and follow give me a follow and um <laughs> Brilliant. And talk to me as well. Yes. Um, so I'm going to wrap up the conversation. Um, so when I um, when I stop the record, you can stay on the line for a minute. Um, but um, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. 
No, it's thank really, you very much. Really good to have you and really good to sort of meet you. I would not even in real life, but meet you virtually. So see you. Um, so great to see you. Um, if you've enjoyed listening to this, um, please do sort of subscribe to uh, Architecture in the Dem. We're available on YouTube and Spotify. And if you want to come on as a guest, please get in contact with me um, at Lisa Rains. You can find me on the franchise website. Uh, that is prideroadfranchise.co.uk. Or you can email me lisa at prideroad.co.uk. So thanks very much, Ming. And I will see you on uh, Monday morning, constructive together on Clubhouse 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Okay, so bye. thank you very much. <laughs>